If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say he should pray about that. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. The first thing I want to hone in on here is death. Can we agree that the encroaching death being spoken about here is not physical death? It is not the cessation of aerobic respiration, but is actually separation from God or enmity with God. The justification for this is that God told Adam he would die the day he ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. To say that Adam didn't die is to make Satan a truth bearer and God the father of lies. Clearly, the father of lights has revealed to us that there is a death that is not physical, separation from God. The point of the ministry of reconciliation is to mend this. That's a fundamental revelation that is shockingly overlooked. Now the focus. How curious it is that it appears John differentiates between sins, those which do not lead to death and those which do. How are we to understand such a statement? I began to think about James who wrote, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away and enticed by his own evil desires. Then when desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And so I reason that John must be referring to extent or fruition of sin in the way an evil desire can be quelled before it gives birth to sin. As if to emphasise there's a point of interrupting the manifestation of sin beyond which you're at odds with God. But that sounded too clunky. And then it occurred to me what Jesus actually taught about sin. You've heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you, that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whoever says to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the Sanhedrin, but whoever says you fool shall be in danger of Gehenna. You have heard it said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus taught us that there is no differentiation, not in substance nor magnitude, whether contemplated or acted out, it is all the same. Now obviously there's nuance here, not every abhorrent thought that pops into your mind is a declaration of will. The mind is a fickle thing and it dances in abstraction between the perverse and the placid. But make no mistake, if you heed the dark notion and operate in accordance to serving the desire and commit to the inclination, whether by self-deception, lies of omission or stringent determination, it's all the same. Jesus taught us that all sin is equal in God's eyes by telling us that lust is adultery and anger is murder. So John cannot be telling us that there is differentiation in sin. There is no different kinds of sin. There isn't a kind of sin that leads to death and a kind of sin that does not. And note the language. John does not mention kinds. He says there is sin leading to death and sin not leading to death. Finally, we arrive at our answer. What is the difference if there is no difference? The only remaining inference to be made is that the sin leading to death is sin still being committed. In other words, the person has not repented. It is a simple conclusion, but based on the teaching of the Christ and the profound grace and forgiveness of God. So if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, what it's talking about there, what it has to be talking about there, because it's talking about a brother sinning, a brother of the faith sinning a sin which is not leading to death. What is? What are they talking about? I believe they're talking about is uh, a situation where you see your brother involved in aberrant behaviour, or perhaps they are embattled by... Um, 
some kind of uh, difficult circumstances, okay? They find themselves struggling with sin. Then if they acknowledge this, if they're, of course, a brother in the faith, then there is forgiveness there for them. There is a opportunity there for them uh, to, to come around, to repent, to ever refine themselves. I really think it's a matter of the language use employed here too that can lead us to overcomplicate matters. The way John says there is sin leading to death, as if this is some kind of revelation that we didn't know before, like he's divulging something particularly deep and profound. You know, there is sin leading to death, and then it's like, wait, what? When in fact that's the norm, that's, of course, sin leads to death. There is no alternative. Um, however, he interestingly says that we shouldn't pray about that. Um, and I think that's maybe just coming down to a misunderstanding. Because it's a strange one to say. Because again, depending on how you look at it, it's at odds with the teachings of Jesus. Jesus says that when someone curses you, let's just say the kind of person that's going to curse you isn't a nice person. Jesus said you would know that you will know you, they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So if someone curses you, they are of course they don't have the love of God in them. If someone curses you, they do not have the love of God in them. So they are a, they are a sinner. But Jesus tells us to bless such a person. So in that case, Jesus is telling us to pray blessings upon the sinner. But weirdly enough, it looks like John tells us not to pray about such a person. If someone's in sin leading to death, don't pray about them. Which just can't be the case. Like, I, I would have to say, John, wait, I think you've got the wrong idea here. Um, but obviously, there's, it's all about how you look at it and what you're taking to the conversation. You have to have the right perspective on this to see what's actually being said. And uh, while it's still not 100% clear to me, I believe what's being said here is that if you see your brother sinning, go and talk to him, work it out, and you can repent and come back from that. If, however, you find someone in a condition of unrepentance and they are enjoying the indulgences of sin, then such a person is on their way to death, that is, separation from God. They're stepping outside of the boundaries of acceptability, okay? They're going out with the parameters of sainthood, okay? And so they, they are in death, in that spiritual status known as death. Now, when it says you shouldn't pray about that, um... I would be interested to, I don't want to make this a huge video where I go into a study about what it means by that. Does that mean you don't all get together with such a person? Like you don't congregate with such a person? Because Paul has said previously not to. Okay, if someone comes in with all the trappings of Satan, you send them out into the world uh, so that they can reap the rewards of that and understand that that behaviour is not good. And, and in so doing, learn from the experience. Um, but, yeah. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. But yeah, I'll leave it there. I think I've shed some light on it. It's one of these scriptures that is just, it's just messed up, man. It's just messed up. It's one of these scriptures that's a little bit different. It's a little bit interesting. It's, it's weird. It's peculiar. It's like, what are you saying? What are you trying to say there? Wait a minute, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. But uh, as we can see, just going to the teachings of Jesus gives us a bit of clarity here. So, sin that leads to death is unrepentant sin. Okay, 
the sin that's not leading to death is sins that are committed uh, during the process of sanctification, during your journey towards self-improvement. As the proverb says, for though a righteous man falls seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes.